But it tastes good. Was you surprised? You ain't doing no talking. <laughs> Hey y'all, <laughs> let me tell you, I wish I had the camera rolling two minutes ago. Let me tell you what happened. So funny. I work in Stone Mountain. I live in Locust Grove, right? So I'm my my Dunkin' Donuts that saved in my Dunkin' Donuts um order app, the the favorite one is here in Locust Grove. But I do go to the one by my job in the mornings to get a coffee to bring me home. So that's just setting up the picture. So I placed the order this morning for my regular coffee and accidentally sent it to the one in Locust Grove. And I said, I'm not waiting to get back home. I need a coffee now. So I went ahead and placed the order to the one in Stone Mountain. Got my coffee, came home. I said, okay, I'll come here later. So anyway, I woke up about an hour ago with the bright idea to cook this big dinner for my husband. He gets off in three hours. Um, so I went to Walmart and, get, and got all the things that I needed. And then I went to the Dunkin' Donuts. And at the drive-thru, I'm saying, hey, I placed this order this morning, but I didn't pick it up. Can I pick it up now? And they were like, well, what is it? Because we probably don't have the order receipt anymore. I started giving her my order. She was like, is this Miss Christy? <laughs> I was like, yeah. <laughs> she was like, come on to the window. We know your order. Oh my goodness, y'all. I drink Dunkin' Donuts too much. <laughs> too, too much. I know somebody, I'm always being asked what it is I drink. This is an iced decaf. I don't drink uh, I drink decaf coffee because of my weight loss surgery. I have to, I don't drink caffeine. So this is an iced medium decaf. It has three shots of caramel swirl, one shot of vanilla, three shots of liquid cane sugar, three creams. That's what's in it. And it is the perfect drink for me. I love it, love it, love it. So anyway, my plan is to make this big dinner um, I am going to smother some chicken wings. I am going, and my, and let me tell you, I do not want to make a lot, lot, lot of food where it goes bad. So I'm hoping I can put my recipes into a smaller amount. So I'm going to make a uh, chicken dressing. I'm going to make uh, a macaroni and cheese. I'm going to uh, smother some chicken wings, ham, and turnip greens. So I'm cheating a little bit because I don't have a lot of time. It's like nine minutes to three. So I went to Ingles because they have a deli where they have like Southern cooking and they make cornbread. So you can buy the whole cornbread from that section. And they're kind of small. So I went and got two pans of cornbread that I'm going to use for my dressing. And I bought a rotisserie chicken because I don't have time to bake or rotisserie my own chicken. So I already got that out of the way. I bought a potato salad because I don't have time to cut potatoes, cook them, put all that, boil eggs and all of that. The, the biggest part will probably be the turnip greens because they're out of the garden and they need to be cleaned really, really good. So I'm gonna get everything else going in the oven and then I'm gonna start on the greens. Uh, so, and I'm gonna turn the camera on because I don't think I've ever cooked this much food or this, I, I don't know if I've ever made the dressing. I've only made one or two dressings and I'm going by a recipe by a YouTuber that I like, Stovetop Kisses. I'm gonna put her link in the description box because she is so comical and down to earth and her recipes, I got my mac and cheese recipe from her. They always come out delicious. So if you're interested in watching this cooking video, y'all go ahead and grab a snack. We're getting, we're getting ready to get to the cooking. Oh, and I got a surprise. Not It's a surprise, but it's not a surprise. I told you guys that I wanted it. Didn't tell you that I purchased it. My Black Friday shopping. 
from home online. I did not go out into the stores and the product came literally the next day. So I'm so super excited. I'll see you guys in a minute. I got to stop by Dollar General, get some aluminum pants. You know how you go in Walmart or you go in the grocery store and when you come out, you like, how did I forget that? Well, I wrote a list, you guys. Didn't put it on the list, but I knew I needed it. So got to remember to put everything on the list. But anyway, running in Dollar General to get three aluminum pans. And then I'll see you guys at the house, okay? Okay. Okay, y'all, it's time to get to the cooking. First order of business, I have greens out of the garden and they're really dirty. So I'm going to put them in some water to soak. My husband actually picked them from the garden yesterday. And I can already tell that um, probably a lot of what's in this bag will be thrown away. But I like to go through them leaf by leaf. Also, these are turnip greens. I also have a bag of turnips that my mom got from the store. Um, and I am going to add the two together. That's the ones for my mom sitting on the counter. But first things first, let's put these in the soak. And then I'm going to kind of get everything together and in the oven that I can um, before I really start cleaning these greens. So the first thing I'm going to do is add a box of elbow macaroni. Um, I'm going to put that on and boil. You, you just need to do this al dente. You can use water if you like. I'm using chicken stock according to the recipe that I have. This is the second time that I've done this and the macaroni has come out absolutely delicious. Now that I have the macaroni on, I'm going to put my smoked turkey um, on the stove so that can start cooking. This will go in the greens. Oh, surprise, surprise. I got my deep freezer, you guys. And it looks perfect in here. It matches the appliances. It's not Frigidaire like everything else, but it does. It just matches the aesthetics of the kitchen. So I'm super excited with it. I actually hadn't even plugged it up um, by the time I showed you this. So I'm going to go ahead and plug it up. And my husband said, well, bye. A cheap pack of meat so I got a pack of bologna and I'm gonna put it in um, the freezer and see how long it takes to freeze it and so that's what I'm doing here plugging it up for the first time and putting my pack of bologna in the freezer and just a side note it was frozen in an hour I'm absolutely pleased nothing in it yet but I know I'll show you guys what how I fill it up in a later video so now I've got whole chicken wings, and I'm going to put these in the soak. Y'all know I like to put a little vinegar in the water, um, and what this does is helps to get that grime and stuff off of it. Once I clean it, these are going to be smothered, so I put them in a pan, and I'm going to add a few things to it, onion powder, garlic powder. Creole seasoning and paprika. Now the paprika is for color because I want to get them, want them to get a nice golden brown color. I cut up lots of onion and bell pepper um, to put in there. And then I'm also going to add one can of cream of chicken and one can of cream of mushroom. Now you can use two cream of chicken. You can use cream of whatever you like. I personally like um, cream of chicken and cream of mushroom. And it's been a long time since I've smothered chicken like this, but it really gives it a good flavor and it comes out well. So just put your soup on top. You don't have to stir it in or anything. Seal that pan with some aluminum foil and stick it in the oven. And when it's halfway done, that's when you'll take it out and stir it. Now I added just a little bit of uh, chicken broth so the bottom of the pan will have some liquid let's go ahead and get this macaroni done you guys you got your macaroni noodles the al dente then you put in a stick of butter and turn that till it starts melting you add a container of sour cream 
uh, all of the measurements will be in the description box. So you add a container, sour cream, give that a good stir. You don't know, you you don't want to stir too much because you're gonna be stirring throughout. I like to add a little seasoning, onion powder, and garlic powder is all I needed. You can add a little bit of salt, but I personally am trying to stay away from the salt. And I add a little um, paprika into it because of, I want color. I want it to be, get a nice color. Now, after a stir, I'm adding some cheeses. This is all-natural Kobe, um, Jack che Kobe cheese. And then I add uh, some pepper jack cheese. And then I had this Fiesta blend, uh, which is like three or four types of cheeses in the refrigerator. So I'm going to add... Uh, Lots of that. Now, I don't have the measurements for this cheese. The recipe calls for up to eight cups. I know that I add um, a lot of cheese. I'm going to add more cheese as we go. So now we want to get all of that mixed in really, really good. And as you can see, I was stirring from the bottom up to the top. I'm going to make the custard now. That's the liquid that holds it together. Three uh, eggs. We're going to add two cups of milk you can add whole milk i added reduced milk because it's what i had and then a cup and a half of heavy cream give it a good stir to get those eggs uh mixed really well in that mixture and then you can go ahead and start layering your macaroni and cheese i use a cast iron skillet you can use a casserole dish what just whatever you like again uh my recipes uh you can tweak it however you want so I put half of the macaroni and cheese in the pan, layer on some more cheese, and add half of the custard. It's going to spread through on its own. Now I'm putting the other half of the mac and cheese on top of that layer and starting another layer. Add more cheese, add the rest of the custard, and a little paprika on the top for color, and you're going to have you some good eating, you guys. Now, I had to add a pan to the oven under it once it started cooking because it, it bubbled over so good. But you know what? I'm not even mad that I got to clean the oven. This macaroni and cheese is always the bomb.com. Go ahead and smack that puppy in the oven. I had my oven uh, preset to 400 degrees. And right now, I have the chicken and the macaroni in there. You guys have seen me do my cornbread a million times, but I, I'm doing it again. So I put a quarter cup of oil in, in the uh, cast iron skillet that I'm going to be using and stuck that in the oven to get hot. Now you're going to need two cups of cornmeal. You're going to need, and that cup I had rinsed out, so you see the cornmeal sticking to it. No worries. Go ahead and put a cup of milk. In that same cup, give it a good stir to get all that cornmeal out of there and pour it in. Now, stir it up really, really good. Stir it real good because you want to make sure you don't have any lumps. Once that oil has heated, you want to stir the oil in, but you want to stir, you want to pour the oil in, but you want to stir the cornbread as you go because the oil is hot and you don't want it to start cooking. Once you got it mixed really well, pour that back in your cast iron skillet. Stick that puppy in the oven, and you're going to bake that for 25 minutes. So now that I got those three things going, it's time to make the dressing, you guys. Again, I bought this cornbread from Ingalls because the deli has cornbread with their meals, and they also make pans of it to sell. I use two of those small pans of cornbread in mine. Crumble it up really, really well. The next thing I added was uh, my soup. Two cans of cream of chicken. Two cans of cream of celery. Now this is a good combination for your dressing. You could add cream of mushroom if you like, but that's what I use. I use bell pepper, onion, and celery. Added onion powder, garlic powder, and chicken bouillon, the powder. I bought, bought the powder, and it's really, really good, you guys. I put it in everything. Stir it up really well, adding chicken broth. I started with two cups of chicken broth, and I think I ended uh, probably with three cups because of the size. Just keep adding it until it gets to the, the moisture of the, the 
to it gets the consistency that you like. Make sure that it stays moist. Um, you're going to add your meat to it and you're going to have to add more chicken broth. So I gave it a break for a second and added butter to the cornbread and also gave that chicken a good stir. And I'm going to stick that chicken back in there uh, with the mac and cheese and we'll get back to the dressing. So you see how moist that um, mixture is? Once you add your chicken, it dries it. It soaks up all that moisture, right? So you're going to have to add some more chicken broth. You want to make sure that it's a really mushy um, combination. I actually ran out of store-bought chicken broth. So I added some chicken bouillon to water, and I'm using that. You talking about flavor, you guys? Now, no, that is not too mushy. Remember, you're going to stick it in the oven, and it's going to continue to cook. That cornbread is going to cook. And when you pull it out in 40 minutes, it's going to look like it may be too soft, but it stiffens as it cools. So don't worry about it. All right. And the dressing to the pan. Now, I personally don't have any room in the roof, in the uh, oven. So once something comes out, I put it in for 40 minutes. You guys, dinner is ready and it's 622. I started at 315. Yo girl worked it out okay got you some greens right there going those tur good turnip greens look at the mac and cheese got that good i had to take me a little taste y'all got that good color on that mac and cheese uh what else we got here oh i didn't talk about the ham it was just a matter of sticking it in the oven and getting it hot i got a small ham uh to go with dinner Cover you back up. This is the um, smothered chicken. Oh, that gravy was good. Now it probably looks a little liquidy right here. Don't worry about it. It As it cools, it gets um, thicker. But you can see those good onions and bell pepper in it. And oh, that smothered chicken was falling off the bone, you guys. Last but not least. That's the good old dressing. I forgot to put paprika on the st on the top of it. So it didn't really get the color that I like. And I turned the oven on boil. On broil, excuse me. And tried to brown it. But hey, no worries. It was still yummy in my tummy. So once my husband came home, he was thoroughly surprised. He didn't even take a shower after work, y'all. He got comfortable and we fixed our food. He was and he really enjoyed it. And I'm so happy that it turned out well. So um here I am fixing my plate. I know you see little corners out of everything. It's okay. You know you gotta taste your food. Make sure that it's good. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I'm still fixing my plate. Oh, oh, you guys, everything turned out so good. Hey, let me know down in the comment section if you're going to try um, these recipes or if you have tried these recipes and tell me how it turned out, okay? I gave my husband a little taste because he didn't have no faith in my dressing and he was like, mm-mm, good. <laughs> this food was so good and it was such a good idea. You guys know as Jehovah's Witnesses, we don't celebrate holidays. This wasn't Thanksgiving. It was just me trying to make a nice meal for my husband. And I'm so glad that I did because it turned out well. That uh, potato salad comes from Publix. It's always really good. And then I added cranberry sauce. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. How your food is? Yeah. It tastes good. Was you surprised? You ain't doing no talking. <laughs>